This is part two of the three parts of understanding how prices emerge to coordinate human behavior. In this video we're going to learn about supply. Just as in demand, we can use math to explain the supply of some good or service. In this case here we could say the quantity supplied of some good is equal to some function of the price of that good. In my specific example here I will say quantity supplied is equal to the price of whatever good we're talking about. We can explain that verbally in this chart to the right. We can simply map out the different price quantity combinations that result from this equation. At a price of zero, quantity supplied will be zero. At a price of four, quantity supplied will be four. At a price of seven, quantity supplied will be seven. And at a price of ten, quantity supplied would be ten. And lastly, we can draw this out graphically just like we did with the demand curve. We start with quantity on our x axis going from zero to ten units price on our y-axis going from zero to ten dollars and now we can graph out different points on our supply. So for example at a price of zero quantity is zero, at a price of ten quantity is ten, at a price of three quantity is three, at a price of eight quantity is eight, and at a price of five quantity supplied will be five. And then we can strike a line through these points and this gives us our supply curve. The supply curve represents how much suppliers are willing to bring to the market at different prices. Now the question of course is why does supply curve slope upwards in price quantity space? The simple answer is the more of something that's produced the more other things we must give up to have those that new production and those other things become increasingly more important to us the more we give up. So for example let's say I want to spend an additional hour uh, reading each week. That's one hour that I must give up doing other things. Obviously I'm going to give up the least cost things first in order to have that hour reading. So if I really value um, playing with my, my kids for one hour or another hour I could spend watching a show that's not that important to me, I'm going to give up watching that show first. I won't give up something more important to me such as playing with my kids for that hour. So in this case here I would give up the show. Now imagine we go, I change to reading one hour a week to reading ten hours more each week. Well now that's ten hours of other things that must be given up and I think we can see that I would be giving up the least important things first and then that tenth hour I would have to give up some things that are far more valuable to me than what I gave up the first hour. The same is true with producing something. Suppose we want to produce Michael Jordan commemorative basketballs. To do so we're going to need rubber, we'll need leather, we'll need labor, we'll need energy, we'll need machines, we'll need a building to produce these. Well these resources now can't be used for other uses. So let's take rubber for example. The first few basketballs we make we have to take rubber from some other use. Let's say it's taken from something that has a lot of ready, uh, readily available substitutes like floor mats. They can now be made with synthetic materials or plastics and that rubber is low cost to us because it really wasn't didn't take a lot to obtain that rubber there were plenty of other substitutes for rubber floor mats but then we get to the point where we're producing so many basketballs we now have to take rubber from uses that are far more valuable to us let's say medical equipment that does not have many substitutes for the rubber used in the medical technology those basketballs will be far more costly to us because the resources needed to produce them were far more valuable to us. So what we can say is the supply curve measures the marginal social opportunity costs of resources used to produce some good or service. Let's start with understanding marginal cost here then. Marginal cost is the change in total cost as we produce one more unit of something. In this case here then if it measures the marginal social opportunity cost let's say the cost of producing that first unit is equal to a dollar. Just like if I were to give up the first, the one unit of one hour or something in order to read, that might just be an hour, a dollar for that hour. <laughs> to produce the second unit of whatever good this is, now our total cost increased by two dollars. We say the marginal cost was two dollars. And then to produce the third unit, our total cost increased by three dollars, so we say the marginal cost of the third unit is three dollars. And if we want to produce ten units, going from nine units to ten, our total cost increased by ten dollars. The marginal cost, the sum of marginal costs is equal, variable cost is equal to the sum of marginal costs. So for example the variable cost of producing three units is going to be six dollars. We incurred a dollar increase in our cost for the first unit, a two dollar increase in cost for our second unit, and three dollar increase for our third units that total sums to six dollars so our total variable cost of three units was three. Now in the case of the 
producing 10 units, our total variable cost will be 50. This will be a little different than adding them up discreetly. We're using a continuous function here in terms of this triangle, so we're just going to take the area of the triangle, and that gives us total variable cost of $50. The variable costs, again, do not include fixed costs. So if I have an ice cream store, the building and insurance would be fixed costs. My variable cost would be the cream, the cones, the electricity, even labor to produce the goods that I'm producing here, the ice cream that I will produce. Now we can see then that producers are willing to supply at any price quantity combination above the supply curve. For example, and they're unwilling to supply any price quantity combination beneath the supply curve. They will not be able to meet their costs if they produce in the red area, so any price quantity combination in that red area they're unwilling to supply. For example, they're willing to produce the second unit for three dollars. Their marginal cost of that second unit was two. If somebody's willing to provide that second, if pay them three dollars for that second unit, they're willing to bring it to the market. If someone's willing to pay eight dollars for that second unit, well, that's even better than three. So obviously, they're willing to pay eight. They're willing to supply the second unit for eight dollars. However, at three dollars, they're not willing to supply the eighth unit. The marginal cost of that eighth unit is eight dollars. It costs them their cost increased by eight dollars to produce that eighth unit. They're not going to produce it if they're only able to get three dollars for that. Therefore they're unwilling to supply in that red area because they're not able to cover their cost of production anything below the supply curve. At a quantity of five we can see with this upward sloping supply curve that there are some producers who are incur lower costs in producing some good or service and there are others with a higher cost and what we want is the least cost producers producing these goods and we can see that to the left of that fuchsia dotted line these are the least cost producers to the right are the higher cost producers well this is where price steps in and keeps producers producing efficiently if the price is five and the producer and the producer would incur a cost of eight dollars to produce one more unit they're not going to bring that to the market but if another producer can do it for four dollars they will certainly bring that to market because they will get five dollars for it so price is what monitors efficiency in this market using a price of five we see that suppliers are willing to bring five units to the market and in this case here their total revenue will be twenty five dollars five units times five dollars each unit gives them a total revenue of twenty five dollars of that twelve dollars and fifty cents are the variable costs of producing those five units. The area above the supply curve beneath the price line is what we call producer surplus. That's the value that producers receive above and beyond their, their variable costs of producing whatever good or service this is. In this case here their total revenue is $25, their variable costs were $12.50, therefore their surplus is $12.50. This is not profit because it does not include the fixed costs. It only includes the variable costs, but this is what the surplus is to producers from producing five units. Now, when we looked at the demand curve, we said the demand, what our demand curve was looking at was explaining to us how much consumers are willing to buy at different prices, holding other things fixed. Supply curve is the same way. How much are suppliers willing to bring to the market, holding other things fixed? Well, what are those other things? First off is technology. There may be different ways of producing something and we want to control for the changes in techno technological changes in producing something. Any increase in technology should increase the supply of some good or service because we don't normally adopt technology if it's going to raise our cost of production. Number two, resource costs. If we're talking about furniture and the cost of lumber increases, therefore the supply curve shifts upward and to the left. We have a decrease in supply. We now have a higher cost of producing furniture. The number of suppliers, the, incre the greater the number of suppliers competing for your dollars, the increase in supply, therefore you, we will have a lower price and lower cost of supply in this market. Natural disasters, if we're looking at something at say the Iowa corn crop, if a flood destroys one-third of the corn crop in Iowa, we will have a decrease in supply. There will be a movement of the supply curve higher price, reduced output of corn due to this natural disaster. And lastly, expectations of future price increases, just like consumers had expectations of future price increases, so do suppliers. If I'm a supplier of gasoline, I expect the price of gas to be high, by, higher by $1 next week. Well, I'm going to 
increase my price now to reduce how much people buy today so I have more gas to sell next week when the price is a dollar a dollar higher therefore we're going to see an immediate increase in price today on the flip side of that if I expect the price of gas to be lower by one dollar next week I want to try to sell as much as I can today in order to get beat this price decrease and that's going to cause the price today to decrease because my supply of gasoline will increase so let's take a look at this market we're starting at five dollars with five units and let's call this orange juice what happens to the supply of orange juice after a freeze in Florida destroys 20 destroys 25 percent of the orange crop well the quantity supplied of orange juice is equal to some function of the price of orange juice that's movement along the supply curve holding these other things constant well one of these other things changed we have a natural disaster which increased the resource cost of orange juice and therefore we would have a decrease in the supply of oranges causing a decrease in supply of orange juice and in this case here the price of orange juice for five units of orange juice goes from five dollars to six dollars before five units were supplied at five dollars now because of this natural disaster suppliers are only willing to bring five units to the market if they're paid six dollars and we can also look at this from the horizontal part at five dollars suppliers were willing to bring five units to the market now at five dollars they're only willing to bring four units to the market what happens in this market for milk as new technology allows farmers to obtain more milk from each cow during milking new technology that exists and has been in existence for more than a decade cows have collars around their necks and when a farmer brings when the dairy farmer brings the cattle in for milking they're brought into a stall and immediately a computer screen pops up telling them how much milk the cow gave last feeding last day last week last month whatever it is and whether the cow had trouble letting the milk come down and this technology allows farmers to obtain more milk from each cow during each feeding and what we ought to expect then is there because of technology again we're going to say the quantity supplied of some good is equal to some function of the price of milk and all these other things held constant well this new technology which allows more milk to be extracted from each cow causes the supply of milk to increase and at any given price farmers are willing to bring more milk to the market or we can say at any given quantity the price would fall in this case here five units had been selling for five dollars or suppliers were willing to bring five units only if they received five dollars now suppliers are willing to bring five units if they receive just four dollars due to this new technology and lastly what is happens in the market for higher education is tuition rates increase again the quantity supplied of, of college is equal to some function of the tuition holding these other things constant well none of those other things changed what we're trying to determine in our market is how much suppliers are willing to bring to the market at different prices and in this case here the price did change and that's going to be movement along our supply curve what we would say is an increase in the price of college tuition caused an increase in the quantity supplied of higher education in this case here there'd be no change in the supply curve there would simply be movement along the supply curve because in this model what we're trying to determine is how much more education would be produced at higher prices and we see what happens with this example right now